put another nipples. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just making sure the strings are <laughs> the same length. Hello guys, thank you for coming over here to the to Two Awesome Men and clicking on, on this video. Uh, if you haven't seen already, we will put a link in the description, the description below or put little things up here somewhere that'll bring you to our other, to the first two videos of this of this whole 100, de 100 movie de of the decade, <laughs> of the decade list. That's, yeah. and I it's, it's like four o'clock. <laughs> Four o'clock p.m. <laughs> I'm usually in, I'm usually still in bed by four p.m. Guys, so. it's like four in the morning right now, so I'm very tired. So uh, we'll put it in the description below or in the up here. Just uh, our last two videos over our 100 through 81. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that in there. Also, if but if you don't want to watch those, we'll go ahead and put in the description below our actual list of those movies so far. Uh, anyways, guys, so we're going to go ahead and well, actually also here's a list of the disclaimers that we have for this video, just so we don't have to talk about it too much. For my honorable mention for this video, I have, this is the end. And this is a movie about James Franco and Seth Rogen and a lot of their actor friends playing themselves in this kind of apocalyptic kind of scenario where the apocalypse is happening uh, on earth and they're trying to survive it. And it, it, it's really hilarious, but at the same time it gets oddly philosophical, which uh, which adds to the hilarity of the whole situation. The honorable mention I'm gonna go with today is Godzilla King of the Monsters, which is a movie that was really hated by critics but loved by audiences for a really good reason. And that is this movie does have a really good mixture of monster and humans because Without humans, I really can't get interested in these kind of movies, but at the same time, you don't want it to all to be that. And so this movie really does have a good amount of that. And also it does have actually really good characters and really interesting relationships. My number 80 is The Shape of Water, which is a very uh, controversial film that really, you know, Guillermo del Toro really has a, really did, makes a ballsy move of just actually making this movie. And yeah, <laughs> just making this movie in general. Uh, because this movie, I already knew it was going to get a lot of backlash from all the people saying it was bestiality, which, you know, kind of is, but, you know, uh, but this movie really does have a really interesting take on a love story. And this movie is just, and honestly, just a beautiful looking movie. The color scheme is just phenomenal for this film. For my number 80, I kind of cheated because I have the John Wick trilogy. And even though I really feel like the first one is by far the best of the trilogy. I do feel like the trilogy as a whole is some of the best action movies we're getting nowadays and really we've ever gotten. So I felt like it would be really, uh, it wouldn't be right to not include the two, two and three because overall it's really well choreographed. Some of the action scenes are things I've never seen before in an action movie. My number 79, I, I looked up and said my number 79. <laughs> my number 79 is a theory of everything, which really just tells the heartbreaking story of- Ah, uh, God, what is that? Smart dude. Um, <laughs> Stephen, Hawking. Stephen Hawking. Really, it really just tells the story of Stephen Hawking, which I don't know how, how truthful it is, but it's really just a heartbreaking story of that. Really kind of beautiful story of this, this relationship. That's what mainly what it's about, is it's a husband and wife that really love each other but they really understand that they really cannot be with each other any longer. My number 79 is Room and not The Room, but Room. Uh, and it's a really, it's kind of a tough watch. Uh, it's about Brie Larson who gets kidnapped and is uh, held in a shed and has a baby with the person who kidnapped her and is having to raise her child while she's kept imprisoned in this shed. And it's really just shows how it affects her and her family and everybody that she knows. Our number 78 is the same, so we're gonna go with Shazam, which to me is one of the best DC movies now, these new DC films. And not just by like good for nowadays DC, but actually a good movie overall that really takes its time with its characters and doesn't so much focus on some of the things that a lot of superhero movies focus on, but more towards these family aspects of the movie. And one of the best parts about this movie is it's a really silly concept about a kid who can turn into a superhero by saying the word Shazam. Yeah. But, and they, they know that's kind of a silly concept. So they kind of play off that and really have a lot of pretty good jokes throughout the movie. But at the same time, it's able to have emotional scenes 
when it comes to the family aspect. And for our number 77, we both have the same one and it is Call Me By Your Name. And this is a really kind of slow burn kind of love story to where it doesn't feel like much is really happening really. But at the same time, you can it's still really interesting. It really keeps your attention. Uh, you're really, you get really invested in the characters and the story. Yeah, and it's really hard to understand why until you look at it later on, because while you're watching, you're like, does this movie really have like a plot? Does it really have like a story? But you realize it really does have a very subtle plot that really just drives a story. You really feel like you're just a fly on the wall watching these two people interact with each other, have fun, and have, be in a relationship with each other and love each other. My number 76 is going to be La La Land. And before watching this, I wasn't really interested in it until people were telling me that it was good. And after watching it, I just absolutely love this movie. Um, I loved the songs. I just love the, the relationship between uh, Emma Stone and uh, Ryan Gosling. They have extremely gay, gay chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're thinking of the last movie we were just talking about. <laughs> they have extremely great chemistry in this film and really just a great ending to this movie where it's just two people who realize they're just on completely separate paths and even though they really love each other and care about each other, they realize it's in both of their best interests to actually just go their own separate ways. My 76 is Fury and this is a movie about uh, a group of soldiers and one of the best things about this movie is really the relationships and the chemistry that the entire cast has with each other. And they really play off of each other really well. And you really feel the bond that uh, the soldiers have. My number 75 is going to be Marriage Story, which is really a great movie about divorce, a very kind of heartbreaking movie about divorce because you know you have two people who do love each other completely and they just want this case they just want this divorce to be civil as possible where it really shows you the damage that things can go through whenever you let outside sources and like lawyers into this divorce and how ugly things can become and you really have just a great chemistry between uh scarlett johansson and adam driver even though they're at each other's throats at times you can tell that they really do care about each other. My number 75 is Dinner for Schmucks, and this is another really feel-good movie that, uh, it's it, it's really silly, but it doesn't really go too far with the silliness. My number 74 is gonna be The Conjuring, and one thing I love about this movie is it's a mainstream horror film that doesn't take the mainstream route of just these jump scares after jump scares, kinda like your uh, run-of-the-mill um, uh, scare house that you can go to to pay money and just get like scares here and there. It actually is a true, in my opinion, a true horror film that really does take its time with its creepiness. My number 74 is a ghost story and this is definitely, definitely one I can see people not liking like at all and I can kind of understand why because there are a lot of shots that just hang on a certain scene where nothing much is really happening. I mean, you have a four minute long scene of Rooney Mara eating a pie with nothing else happening, just her eating a pie. And, but you still feel the emotions that are happening in these scenes. And, and even that pie scene, you feel the emotions that are happening. And it's a really kind of a heartbreaking movie if you really understand what it's trying to go for. My 73 is going to be Dr. Sleep. And for me, this is one of the better horror movies that's come out in the past few years. And also, it just was insane to see this movie, a sequel to The Shining movie, which it was hard to even make in the first place, because number one, The Shining movie is just loved by everyone, including myself, it's my favorite horror movie of all time. But you also have the fact that you're trying to please The Shining movie fans, and you're trying to please fans of The Shining book and Dr. Sleep book and just Stephen King in general, because Stephen King hated The Shining because the, the movie went against the book quite a bit. And so you're trying to make a movie that's a sequel to The Shining, but also based on a book that's made that's a sequel to The Shining. So it's hard to actually make this completely accurate, but they do it really well. And somehow or another, it's really well done. And it's a really solid sequel. That's a really confusing way to say it. My number 73 is Blade Runner 2049. And the director of this movie, Denis Villeneuve, is honestly one of my favorite directors uh, working today and really ever. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of movies from, hit, from him on my list later on. But this movie is a sci-fi action movie that really 
doesn't really go over the top with the action. It really cares more about the characters and the visual effects are some of the best I've seen in a movie. The color uh, grading and everything, just it's really pleasing to look at uh, just overall. My number 72 is Zootopia, which to me is one of the best animated features in a, in a while in some of the past few years, because this movie, not only is it really fun and really funny, really entertaining, but it knows how to bring up certain subjects of racism and sexism, but bring them up in this this form, this this medium of these of animals, but at the same time, it doesn't come off as just trying to just trying to just push something out there with some kind of message. It does it really nicely, and it flows really well in how they write it into the stories of these animals' lives. My seventy-two is the gift, and it's the first movie that Joel Edgerton uh, wrote and directed, and he did really great with his first movie to do so. It's a movie about a guy played by Jason Bateman who comes across a guy he knew in high school and you start to learn secrets about both these characters. And it's a really, it's it's kind of a mystery movie that doesn't act like a mystery movie. And by the end of it, it really makes you think twice about the characters you've watched for the entire movie. My number 71 is gonna be Dallas Buyers Club, which is probably one of Matthew McConaughey's his kind of breakout roles where he became something more than what he usually did of kind of just like the uh, the hot guy of the movie but more he kind of showed he really showed himself to be a great actor and that is being said from his oscar one in this film this movie is really great and sometimes heartbreaking at times and it really makes you think that some people actually can change their minds about some beliefs that they have against certain types of people. For my 71, I have Deadpool. And the thing I really love about this movie is I really love that they were able to do his origin justice, especially after X-Men Origins. But really another, another aspect that I just love about how they got the origin right is because Deadpool has become such a meme character that has really gotten to a point of people not understanding like how dark the character can get and how, how dark his origin story really is. And I really love how they just brought that part of his story to the movie. Well, there you go, guys. There was our number 80 through 71. Uh, and we'll be filming, not not now, but it's like it's 4.30. I am <laughs> dying right now. I'm so tired right now. Uh, but we'll be filming that later on over our home. Oh, 70 through 61. There you there go. You go. <laughs> That's the numbers that come later. You can count. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be filming those later. But thank you so much uh, for 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 watching this. Uh, these, this oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, can start, you can say something. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social media with Facebook, oh, Instagram, oh, and Twitter. Hold up. I was like, I was like making noises. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't know you were start up. Okay. <laughs> you told me to. <laughs> And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Two Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us uh, later. <laughs>